What's up YouTube, John here. Thank you for joining Blue Carbon Reefing. So we are going to finally give you an update on my battle with Dino Flagellants. This is episode number three. So if you have not seen episode one and two, I will leave links in the description below. Definitely go back and check those out. Um, it has been at least eight or nine months. So um, I, long story short, I wanna tell you I am still battling. Um, I'll tell you what I have done right and what I have done wrong and why am I still battling the dino flagellants or what happened uh, and I kind of wanted to show you what's going on so it's not the end of the world things are definitely a lot better um, however uh, things have come back a little bit and I'll kind of tell you why um, so I originally had uh, after about six months of battling uh, maybe even a little bit less but had decided I'm gonna try dino X so you guys have probably seen it. Um, it is not a cure-all for dino flagellants. It does not work on every single type. There are many different types of dinos, um, but I did decide to do it. So I'm gonna kind of pop up some, some pictures. Um, when I actually dosed this, I did dose it per the instructions. Um, I had dosed it over the course of only about 10 days. And you're supposed to dose it, I believe, every other day. Um, a certain amount until you see everything go. Uh, I will say that it definitely made the dinos go away very quickly, but however, um, it ended up killing um, some of my most prized corals and uh, really, really uh, stunted the growth and made a lot of things turn gray. Uh, luckily, a lot of things have survived, so what you're seeing here is what things look like today. Uh, this is the frag tank downstairs, so I'm gonna get give you a quick overview of what's going on, but um, a couple things I'm kind of doing right that I wanted to go through. Um, and by the way, I'm going to do this video as kind of a point and shoot style um, per my buddy Billy Pipes. I'm kind of taking his advice, um, kind of what he does. So you're not going to see a whole lot of editing here. This is going to be kind of a straight video all the way through with an update. I do kind of want to show you what things look like um, and kind of tell you what I've been doing to kind of battle it. And uh, we'll come back for a part four because I'm confident. Uh, I kind of made a mistake in why things have come back a little bit, but um, we're going to obviously beat this battle and I'll kind of tell you what I'm doing and hopefully uh, we come back in another month or two and you'll see everything's gone and everything looks perfect. So, um, corals itself, now that I've stopped doing the dyno, which I only did for about 10 days, um, I only did it for about 10 days, but I started seeing things right away that were heavily impacted by the Dino X and started turning gray. So I'll post some pictures here kind of over the, the video so you can kind of see what things look like. And uh, it took a good 30, 45, 60 days for things to start rebounding and turning around. Uh, the dinos off the sand bed in the main display went away. Um, for the most part, the dinos um, dissipated, but not 100%, because even within that 30 days of stopping, I could tell the sand bed started to show some signs of dinos again, but I was not going to dose the Dino X again because it was not worth the risk of my corals. So as you can see, corals are actually pretty in pretty good shape. Uh, I've been cutting and pruning some things, so you'll have to bear with some of the smaller pieces, but we've expanded some, some nice pieces of SPS. Um, but I did want to show, and maybe you can see it, um, the bubbles and the nasty slimy stuff is still still there. It's not gone 100%. Uh, it's actually come back a little bit. You can see right here, this is all that stuff. And I haven't put it under a microscope again, but you know, obviously this is definitely dinos. Uh, tank isn't terrible. You know, for the most part, that whole bottom there is just purple coralline. Um, I am trying to get my nutrients back in line again. So you are seeing a little bit of hair algae kind of blowing around. I do have uh, an algae blenny in here, a fox face and a yellow tang that are kind of helping keep it, uh, you know, kind of trimmed. But um, we're still kind of dealing with that battle. Uh, I have expanded my system probably haven't seen this or if you follow me on Instagram you have uh, but I actually ended up turning my 150 gallon tank which was a refugium into now an additional frag tank and then the 110 gallon which was just live rock behind it Let's see if I can take this off um, is now in my new refugium so it's filled to the max with Chato which is where I think some of the negative or kind of the problem came in because 
Um, the biggest thing with dinos is you want to run a little bit higher of your nutrient levels. So higher phosphate levels, higher nitrate levels, and this Grow Star Light that I had gotten did an amazing job at growing Chato. Um, however, it really took my, my nitrates, which were actually really high, um, at one point there were 100 and, almost 160 parts per million, um, and they're basically zero now, which is why the dino started coming back, I believe, because <clears throat> the nitrates, of course, kind of bottomed out. Now, my phosphates, I've been trying to keep around 0.1. Uh, I found anywhere from 0.08 to 0.2 is kind of a good area for them to stay. Maybe there's a little bit of extra algae in the tank, but for the most part, that's what the fish are for. It keeps them fed. Um, but if you can see, and I know I didn't turn all this stuff off, but most of this frag rack is a black uh, light diffuser, but you can definitely see there are spots where you got the air bubbles and the kind of the nasty algae that's growing. I'm doing this under the blues because for the most part, I have found that the white spectrum really, really makes the dino kind of take off. So if I just run 100% blues, the corals do just fine, the colors are good, but it really kind of helps keep the dinos at bay, so at least they're not getting worse. It is not going to solve the problem, uh, but definitely will help keep things from spreading and getting even worse. Um, so back to this frag tank. I'm going to walk upstairs too, but just kind of wanted to show you. It's still there. As you can see, I have... Uh, some dinos on the on the wall and uh, I'm really just kind of focusing right now on getting my nutrients under control so my phosphates are still around 0 0.08 uh, 0 0.07 0 0.09 uh, keeping that pretty consistent and my nitrates are practically zero so I am actually now dosing uh, I am dosing nitrate and phosphates just to make sure I'm keeping my nutrients up um, both are potassium. Um, I have found that keeping my potassium a little bit higher is good for my corals and coloration. Um, I normally am keeping my potassium in the 440 range. So I know 400 is really most people are aiming for, but um, I stopped dosing just potassium by itself because I did used to do that. But now with dosing the phosphate, the amount of potassium phosphate and the potassium nitrate, uh, I'm obviously keeping the phosphate levels high, but I've seen no ill effects from, uh, you know, a 440 roughly in potassium. So, um, as far as the as far as the tank itself, corals-wise, it is really just doing great. Um, I have not seen any other coral deaths after the Dino X had come, uh, and kind of I stopped dosing that. Really everything as far as coral wise has been doing good. I've had no fish deaths. Um, it's really just a matter of the unsightly dinos really at the most part. So I'm gonna go upstairs and end this and kind of show you what the sand bed looks like and the rocks upstairs because for, for the most part, that's really the only spot that I have a sand bed and I really think that that's where the, the dinos are kind of showing. Um, I will say a couple things while I'm down here. Um, I do have just a cheap Jabo uh, UV sterilizer. It's a 55 watt. That has definitely helped. Uh, again, not a cure-all, running a slow flow, maybe two, 300 gallons per hour through it, um, but it definitely will help. Um, really, these dinos, obviously, in order for the, the UV sterilizer to help, we have to get it into the water column. So, really, that's what I'm trying to do is uh, I come down here and I kind of turkey base the frag plugs and stuff like that to kind of get it up into the water column and hopefully it'll get sucked and input through the UV sterilizer and kind of you know knock it back a little bit so it's really what I'm focusing on is keeping my nitrates and phosphates a little bit higher running my UV sterilizer and continuously kind of blowing the the dinos whatever I can off of the frag plugs just to kind of keep it away from the corals so I'm going to show you upstairs what that looks like and then we'll end this video and we'll definitely come back for a part four okay so here's the main display um, as you can see um, either we're getting kind of a, a greenish LG um, on, on the sand bed um, or of course it's the dinos of course I am seeing some bubbles as you can see right here in the middle about right there there's some air bubbles that's showing the the dinos the rocks itself are staying pretty clean I have a pretty good amount of flow going through here um, but there's definitely uh, the rocks are not just showing the purple, they're kind of being covered. Um, but again, corals are doing really well. This is a PC rainbow that's 
uh, sprouting off. Um, this is your blue zing. But I just kind of wanted to show you what the display looks like as an overview so you can kind of see, you know, there's definitely algae and stuff on the rocks. Some of the areas with higher flow up here, there's absolutely nothing. It's really actually kind of the sides of the rocks um, that are kind of showing the most. And really at the end of the day, the sand bed uh, is really what work looks bad. So I'm not really spazzing out. I'm not really, um, you know, too, too worried. I know I will beat the dinos. Uh, really, at the most part, it's just unsightly. I've not had any other issues with corals or, uh, you know, fish deaths. So I'm going to keep working on this. I just wanted to show you an overview. Uh, I've made a lot of changes to this system over the last few months. I know I haven't been posting videos, uh, you know, every week or every couple weeks like I was before. I am going to get back into that. I'm definitely going to update you guys on what's going on with the system. Uh, but uh, per request, we definitely have you know an update that's needed for this um, still fighting the battle guys so stick with me we will get this we will beat this and we'll kind of go from there so uh, again I'm gonna make this just a point and shoot not a whole lot of editing going so I can get this video out to you guys uh, and then I'll be putting out some videos again soon if there's anything you guys want to see uh, definitely reach out to me leave a comment below uh, I'll be happy to try to you know do whatever you guys are looking for and we'll get some updates and all the changes that I've been making so Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Welcome. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Happy reefing.